Why aren't my solar panels producing at peak power? We're going to be answering that question and a whole lot more in today's video. We're going to be looking at DC versus AC power ratings, as well as standard test conditions versus real world normal operating conditions. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge. And for the past eight years, I've been helping homes get set up with solar power so that they can survive a loss of the electric grid. Now, one of the questions that we often get is, why aren't my solar panels producing at peak power? And I'm gonna answer that question today and I'm gonna explain the difference between the nameplate DC power rating on your solar panels, as well as what's called the uh, normal module operating temperature power rating or NMOT power rating. We're also gonna be looking at the difference between uh, DC rating on the solar panels and the AC rating on the inverter, which is what actually produces usable power for the home. And so we're gonna dig into that so that you can understand exactly how much power should you expect from your solar power system. Now, the chart we're looking at here illustrates what is sometimes called clipping loss, and I'm explaining what that is. What you see here is basically this is just time here on the, um, on the X axis. So as sun rises, you'll see solar power production starts to peak up and then it will peak in the middle part of the day here and it begins to fall off as the sun begins to set in the evening. Now you'll notice near the top of this curve, the inverter output sort of flat lines here at a certain level. And what that illustrates is that's the power rating of the inverter. So for example, let's say you have solar panels and the total power rating of the solar panels is seven and a half kilowatts or 7.5 kilowatts. And you hook those solar panels to an inverter or to a group of micro inverters that have an AC power rating of only six kilowatts then that difference, that 1.5 kilowatt difference, that's called the clipping loss or the, the clipping factor. And what it basically is showing is that in certain conditions, when you're in very, very high sunlight and cool temperatures so that the solar panels can operate at maximum efficiency. So in certain cases, you have the potential to where your solar panels could produce more power, potentially could produce more power, but the power output is being limited by the inverter's power rating. And this is very, very common. Um, as of this recording, uh, the solar panel that we've installed most, at least uh, leading up to this year, uh, was a 325 watt Canadian solar panel. You may have seen our previous video about uh, showing how that panel works. However, we would pair that 325 watt solar panel with a microinverter that was rated for 250 watts output power. And so again, that, the difference in those two numbers is you know, potentially the, the, the clipping factor or the clipping loss. Now, let me explain why we would do that. Why would we pair a solar panel that has a higher power rating than what the inverter uh, itself can uh, output in terms of usable power? Okay, so in order to understand this, you need to understand the two different uh, methods that are used to rate uh, solar panel power. And uh, again, those are standard test conditions or STC power rating, which is basically ideal in the laboratory. And then the other one is the NMOT, which stands for normal module operating temperature, uh, or another way to think of it is real world conditions. What, what are, how is the solar panel gonna perform in, in an actual real world condition? And so what we're gonna look at today is uh, the solar panel that we're offering now is the Qcells 340 watt panel. And I wanna show you the difference between the STC rating on the panel versus the uh, NMOT, a normal operating conditions rating. So the panel that we're using right now is the 340 watt model. Again, when I'm saying 340 watt, I'm talking about that is the STC standard test condition rating. And for that model panel, the normal module operating temperature rating is only 255 watts, right? So there's a pretty big difference, about a 90 watt difference there. So although you might look at it and say a 340 watt solar panel, 
if in real world conditions we're only going to get 250 or 255 watts out of that out of that panel then that tells us that we could potentially pair it with an inverter that that is more in line with this power rating because under real world conditions that's the that's the range of power output we can actually expect now let me explain again why the discrepancy when we're talking about standard test conditions this is in a laboratory so the solar panel is tested in a highly controlled environment in a laboratory and the light source is applied directly on top of the solar module and it's directly perpendicular right when the solar panels operate most efficiently when the photons the sunlight hits the cell directly perpendicular in the real world that almost never happens because as the sun is rising and then it moves throughout the, the, the course of the day and then eventually it sets. So typically in the real world, the sun is n almost never hitting the cell directly, you know, perf perfectly perpendicular. So that's one difference. The other difference is the temperature, right? So normal operating uh, conditions on a, on a rooftop solar array could be 120, 130 degrees in full sunlight. Compared to in the laboratory test conditions, they're typically testing at between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So just like, just like what we, how we would normally sort of uh, control the climate in our home, that's the temperature at which the STC power rating is determined. Now, solar panels, like other electrical equipment, when the temperature starts to get really high, the efficiency of that, that equipment drops down. So again, when you're looking at this discrepancy between standard test conditions and normal operating conditions, you know, we have to take into account the fact that the sunlight is not going to be perfectly perpendicular to the solar cell, except for a very small part of the day. We have to take into account the ambient temperature. In the real world, ambient temperature on the rooftop is a lot hotter than in a laboratory. And then, of course, you also tend to have at least partial cloud conditions uh, throughout the day. So even if it's a sunny day, it's very, very rare that you'll see it where there is not a cloud, not a single cloud in the sky where you actually are getting full direct sunlight. So folks, this has been an explanation of, you know, why isn't my solar panel producing at peak power and uh, help you understand the difference between, again, ideal laboratory conditions versus real world performance. Uh, as always, if you're getting good information uh, from the channel here, be sure to click on the like button and click on that subscribe button. And be sure to go ahead and share this out as well as post a comment or question if you have it below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Well, again, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. As always, I'm Joe Ordia, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.